Baker, John Jose to the stage. Woo! Thanks, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> Good well, day, lads, mums, dads, granddads, grandmas, and anything in between. I hope you've all been enjoying your night. I still remember my great dinner like it was yesterday, despite it being a whole six years ago. Which means I don't know many of you lads, and many of you probably don't know me. But as you just heard, we all know your assistant, our deputy principal, Miss Suzanne, and my mother. I've never witnessed her as an MC, but wow, not just a beautiful lady, but a bloody great speaker, <laughs> Now, I know what you're probably thinking, oh, this guy's just here because his mum teaches here, and the school has copped out with a second-rate speaker. Now, I can tell you that is not entirely true. I might be a second-rate speaker, but I wasn't asked to speak here because of my mum. In fact, she didn't even know I was going to be asked. I'm told I was asked to speak here because the school had faith in me and making sure that you lads, as they put it, don't fall asleep. <laughs> so apparently being remembered for being loud and slightly annoying in class, which us boys call banter, <laughs> has its perks. So keep it up, lads. <laughs> uh, if you think I'm a second-rate speaker, then that's cool. But I'm going to take an opportunity right now to prove you wrong which is actually a pretty good segue into what I want to speak about tonight. Opportunities. Opportunities that came my way as I entered the world outside the gates of Westlake and probably opportunities that are going to come your way too. But first, I'd like to take this opportunity to clear one thing up for good. My mum's last name and my last name. It's pronounced who's a. Not how's it. <laughs> not how is it, not who is it. <laughs> Definitely not, as my mates like to say, Jose. <laughs> it is Jose. So mum taught here when I was a student, yet some of my teachers still got it wrong and called me Jose. <laughs> so if any of you, if any of you guys don't ta don't take anything out of this tonight, just remember how to say my last name, and that is Jose. And that goes for you teachers as well. <laughs> Tell your little brothers, cousins, anyone you know coming to Westlake that if they want to get in the good books with the deputy principal early, go up to her and say, hey, Miss Jose. Because trust me, us Jose's notice that when you get it right. <laughs> for me, it's happened to me three times. Hope if I can get this thing to work. Oh, yeah. yeah. One was with Mr. Zimmerman, absolute legend, who you can see here, me having a beer with uh, six years ago. Second time was my current boss at work, and the third time, well, the third time hasn't happened yet. So, if any of you want to take an opportunity tonight to impress me and my mother, come up to us and say, hey, Mr. and Mr. Jose. Cool. So. <clears throat> Anyways, opportunities, eh? As you've probably heard a thousand times already, what a bloody year it's been. And for you guys in the seventh form, it couldn't have been any harder. But where there is darkness, there is light. Or in this case, opportunity. And what an opportunity it must have been for you guys this year. An opportunity to play PlayStation during class. <laughs> an opportunity to wear mufti to class. And if you had to wear a uniform, I'm sure it was the same combo of yandies and the same old shirt for the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> An opportunity to grow non-regulation haircut, and perhaps even some super manly facial hair. An opportunity to get closer to your parents, and of course, as your parents can probably agree, it was an opportunity for you to work out just how far you'd have to go to completely piss them off. <laughs> but how fun is winding up your folks, eh lads? But it was also, also an opportunity for you lads to understand your levels of self-discipline. How much work did you really do when no one was breathing down your neck? And how many times did your Zoom not work when it was time for you to hand in your homework? How much weight did you gain? And how many times did you actually shower and brush your teeth before attending your virtual school? <laughs> if your answer was not too much, a little bit of weight, 
and I didn't brush my teeth, but I did have a peppermint magnum in the morning, <laughs> which, trust me, does the job on a bad day, then you're probably not alone. But lockdown is sort of what life is like outside of school. Not so much that you're locked in at home, but whatever happens in your life is completely in your hands. You can sit around and do nothing, or you can find that self-discipline and drive within yourself to start pursuing your dreams now. There are no caring and loving teachers giving you scabs for having your shirt untucked or for not doing your schoolwork. Your parents are no longer forcing you to study for exams and stay home on a school night. You're at that time of your life where nobody is going to do it for you. Whether you go into work, into an apprenticeship, go to uni, or maybe you just want to have another unofficial lockdown and do sweet F all for the next wee while, it's completely in your hands. Your parents aren't going to wake you up to get to where you need to be. If you go to uni, whether or not you attend class is completely up to you. Your lecturers get paid whether or not you pass your course. And hey, if you fail, it's more money for the uni when you have to repeat that class. <laughs> and if you start working, forget about sickies, you only get five of those a year. But that's where your first opportunity comes in. Just how much drive and self-discipline do you have to start your journey now to get to where you want to be in five and ten years' time? Because realistically, as you know it, school's over. The protective gates of Westlake are now gone. I'm sure Westlake has set you up to be a fine young man, but whatever happens next is completely in your hands. For me, my first opportunity outside of school was uni. I went to AUT here in Auckland, and the second opportunity or decision I had, is probably one a lot of you will have too, is where the heck do I live? I was lucky enough not to be forced out of home straight after school, but that doesn't mean it was set in stone. I was caught with two options. Option one, go to uni, save money, live at home. Option two, go to uni, go flatting, have heaps of fun, spend all my money getting by, and probably get fat. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. So I sort of went with both options. I stayed at home, I went to uni, and I got fat. <laughs> It was the perfect balance between the two options that presented itself to me, but probably not the best balanced diet. And we'll get back to that. In terms of out of school opportunities, those, those are probably going to be the first and second ones that present themselves to you. First is probably what the heck do I want to do, and second, where the heck do I want to live. But at the end of the day, lads, that decision is completely yours. No one will make it for you, so if you're still thinking about, thinking about it, that's cool, but maybe it's time to really start thinking about it. So there I was, I went off to uni while living at home. Life was good. But what wasn't so great was the fact that I enrolled for a double degree, business and communications. I quickly found out that two degrees wasn't for me. So I spoke to the careers dudes at uni and I took the opportunity to drop my business degree. Yes, it means I would come out of uni with one less degree, but it was still an opportunity. An opportunity to be less smart, but it was an opportunity to focus my time on what I really wanted to do. Opting to, opting to do one degree had a roll-on effect. Sorry, my mouth's dry. <laughs> opting to do one degree had a roll-on effect. It freed up my time, which meant I, know, I now had an opportunity to get a part-time job. But the beauty about opportunity is that when oppor opportunity presents itself, you're going to miss some. And for me, landing my first part-time role out of school was a missed opportunity. I was too lazy with committing to something, so when money got tight, I ended up having to take whatever was really going there for me. And for me at the time, the only part-time work really going was working at the warehouse, which doesn't sound too bad, but for me it was pretty stink. My job was on the nightfall, which meant every Friday night for my entire first year of uni, I was spent stacking the shelves at Milford Warehouse from 6pm to 1am. And for someone who likes to socialise and wanted to get to know my uni mates and a few of the girls, it was not the greatest hours to be stuck at work. But I slept, I slept on my first opportunities for work and I ended up having to do the first thing available when I, had, when, I had, when I needed the money. So for you lads, learn from my mistake. If you're at uni and you need money, take the half decent job. The sick dream part-time job probably won't present itself to you before it becomes the I need money stage. No matter what, just don't be the guy who has no job but loves to ask his mate if he can transfer you next week. <laughs> and hey, if you take that half-decent job, 
and the dream one comes along, you have the opportunity to leave the half decent job and still take the dream one. So after about a year at the warehouse, I was out drinking with some of my friends and started chatting to one of the dudes whose mums ran the water polo program at Kristen School. One thing led to another and I took the opportunity to be a Westlake water polo coach for Kristen. Goodbye Friday nights at the Wadi Fuddy. <laughs> Which for me, truly was the dream. Well, the dream part-time job. Kristen, that bloody rich school, named for a very happy 19-year-old me. No more night shift, and I could now do something on a Friday night, and I've got to teach kids how to play and better themselves in a sport that I absolutely love. Uni was going well, I had a job that I liked, I was a happy man. The time flew by and it got to my final year of uni. I was getting a major in radio and a minor in advertising, so I knew I needed to start working in the industry. But there were no opportunities coming up. I knew there were, there were no jobs going, but I knew I needed experience to land a job when I was done with uni. I didn't want to be a full-time water polo coach with a degree. So I took the opportunity to email a few radio stations seeking some work on their promo teams, and what do you know, ZM said I should come in and talk, and boom, I got a job driving the Black Thunders, which was sick. A nice foot in the jaw, foot in the door, casual work for me. And we gave away a lot of free stuff. Chalky milks, chocolate, lollies, chips, pies, you name it. But with a lot of free junk food came a lot of one chocolate milk for you, sir, and one for me. <laughs> Which really didn't help with staying at home and getting fat stage. <laughs> Fast forward a few months, an opportunity came up at NZME to produce time saver traffic bulletins. You know the traffic reports you hear on almost every radio station every day? Yeah, I used to write those. Um, yeah. <laughs> Which it was amazing. It was amazing for my career, but but uh, um, shortly after that, I got talking to one of the big dogs at ZDM, and he thought I was pretty funny, and he asked me if I wanted to get on air. Yo, my dream was finally coming true. I've just graduated uni. I'll produce time saver traffic during the week and have a cheeky ZDM show during the on the weekends. How good! Consider that opportunity sussed. So, so he started training me, and he's pretty keen to get me going. However, it was not to be. A few weeks before I was meant to go on air for my first weekend show, an opportunity at Vodafone came up, a full-time gig, which for me was great news, but it wasn't radio. At the moment, I was working 5.30 to 9.30 in the morning, then 3.30 to 7.30 at night, watching traffic and telling you guys where not to go and where to go. <laughs> and the hours make a lot of sense because no one really cares about traffic during the middle of the day, but it didn't, a lot, didn't make a lot of sense for my sleeping schedule. For me, the hustle was real, but the struggle, damn, the struggle of night shift with late polo trainings and to early mornings at work to late nights on the weekend drinking was also very real. So I applied for the Vodafone job. I didn't really think I was gonna get it since it required five plus years experience in corporate comms and this man was only 21. How could I have worked in, in corporate communication since I was 16? But when they offered me the job, I had a huge decision to make. And one day you guys will come across come to a crossroad where you have a, sim a similar decision to make. It might not necessarily be with work, but there will be a time where you have an awesome opportunity on one hand and an awesome opportunity on the other, but you can only choose one. So I had to think long and hard about which opportunity to pursue. End of the day, I chose to work at Vodafone and give up the radio dream. But the beautiful thing about this, lads, is that the decision is completely your own. Mum and Dad weren't going to make the, the decision for me. Yeah, sure, they could help. But like I said earlier, it was my life. It was whatever decision I made, I knew it had to be for me. And you guys need to make sure you do the same every single day in your lives. So yeah, I started at Vodafone in a comms role. When I started, I was the li liaison guy between our marketing team and our advertising agency. I would receive a marketing brief or whatever from some big dog at Vodafone, and it was up to me to then turn that brief into a creative brief send it to our advertising agency, who then made some sort of ad out of it, and then it was up to me to get the agency to make the changes and perfect it. Make sure it was Vodafone tone of voice before I gave the approval, and then would then, would then show the big dog what was created. So put simply, big dog tells me we're going out with an offer, then I would come back to said big dog with an amazing on-brand ad that the agency created to send to our customers via direct marketing, in, in your letterboxes, emails, texts, and social media. Pretty cool. Anyway, so some of the work the agency was producing at the time started coming back not too flash. 
and I didn't want to show the big dogs that work. So when presenting the options to the big dogs, I took the opportunity to use my own advertising skills and secretly popped in Jono's vision as part of the agency's work, which wasn't really the right thing to do. It was actually a bit naughty. <clears throat> After a few weeks, I noticed that the campaign and the copy, which is the words on the page, we were, we were ended up running with, were more often mine than not. So then I sacked up and told my boss what I was doing, and then he stood up and walked away and told the next big dog. Big, big dog comes and asks me if this was true. I tell big, big dog, yeah, it's true. He says, hmm, okay, and then walks away. Oh dear. A few weeks go by, big, big dog asks to talk to me in private. Haven't seen the guy since he, hmm, okayed me. But he sat me down in a room and then he asked me if I wanted to be a copywriter for Vodafone. And as, as he put it, pay me to do the shit I'm good at. He wanted to set up an agency and he wanted me to be a part of it, but he wanted to make sure I was going to be at Vodafone for the next wee while. Thank God. I thought I was about to get told off, but I ended up walking away with a little promotion. So shortly after that, Big Big Dog set up an in-house agency, which meant I officially became a copywriter for Vodafone, and it meant I would create a lot of our direct marketing in-house, and in turn, Vodafone would save a ton of money on the agency fees. Now I write EDMs, DMs, text messages, social and website copy that goes over to a million people every single week and I bet Mr. Berry wouldn't have guessed someone from his year 13 English visual class would be writing to the millions every week. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying lads is that there are a lot of opportunities outside of Westlake. When I left I had it in my head that I wanted to be in radio but after taking the plunge on various opportunities my path changed and I've ended up in a career in advertising and I couldn't be happier. Some opportunities will present themselves on a plate, some won't even be there and you'll have to go out and find them. And others will come at the same bloody time and it will be up to you to decide which one you want to pursue. And being a loud guy, I get noticed, in the office as well. It's good loud, not bad, annoying and disruptive, but definitely get noticed. So come Christmas time last year, I was fortunate enough to be noticed by a certain team and they offered me the opportunity to be the face of Vodafone Christmas. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys saw these ads last year, uh, but if you did, then sup, I'm the Santa from Vodafone. Uh, if you didn't, then sad. <laughs> But yeah, I got to spend an entire day at Long Bay Beach dressed as bloody Santa Claus uh, with a full-on camera crew, which is something I've never done, but an opportunity that paid off big time. Literally, because of this opportunity, which was well out of my comfort zone, but y'all are right, almost, almost everybody at work seems to know who I am, and there are a crap ton of Vodafone, crap ton of people at Vodafone, I've actually seen a few here tonight. Um, and yeah, I, I sometimes even play soccer with the CEO, which is pretty crap up. Cool. So, yeah. Take the opportunities that come, lads. Um, they come, they go. Opportunities don't always go, go your way. Missed opportunities, they happen. But if you don't go for them, you'll never know if you would have had them or not. And for me, fortunately enough, my biggest missed opportunity was caught on camera, and I'll show you now. Oh, that was a great opportunity, wasn't it? No! <laughs> If you, if, for those of you who don't know what that was, that was a Tui Catch a Million promotion, and that was me. If I caught that ball with one hand, I would have walked away with $50,000. Which is pretty painful. <laughs> I guess you could say I dropped the ball on that one, eh? <laughs> but on top of the 50k, it happened on live TV, and Mark Richardson, yeah, I don't know if you heard him, but he's saying, oh, that was a great opportunity, wasn't it? You gotta keep your eyes open, mate. <laughs> Which is fitting for my opportunities talk tonight, but not so much for the fact that I watched that ball go in my hand, and I watched it fall out, and I watched fifty thousand dollars land on the ground. My eyes were definitely open. But after watching that clip and the missed opportunity, it presented me with another opportunity. I realised that all those free goodies working at ZM had caught up on me, and I was slightly on the chunky side. <laughs> 
I had nailed the whole op the option one with a bit of option two of living at home and getting fat. Which is cool, it's cool, but I wasn't a fan. So the missed $50,000 opportunity gave me the opportunity to realize I was a little overweight. So I took it upon myself to, to take the opportunity of saying no to junk food and saying yes to the gym and healthy food. <laughs> I went hard as on the old diet, switched from Billy Mavs on the weekend to vodka sodas, hit the gym in the pool <laughs> most days, and I ended up losing 23 kilos in 15 months. Yeah, cheers. Yes. Uh, and that made me feel pretty stoked. I was never an overweight guy, but the fun times at uni certainly would tell you differently. So in hindsight, am I glad I dropped the ball? No way. <laughs> <laughs> but with that missed opportunity, I saw an opportunity, and I took it. So when you're out in the real world, and you miss an opportunity, find a way to take an opportunity from that. It might be landing a, job, landing a job interview, but not getting the job. The opportunity from that missed opportunity is that you now have experienced a job interview and you know what to do better next time. You might fall in love and then get dumped. The opportunity, you experience love and heartbreak for the first time. And you now get to spend more time with the lads. <laughs> nothing, nothing beats that. <laughs> Or like me, you might score some tickets from work to a concert, but you're just not satis satisfied enough. So last year Vodafone hooked it up and I got a, managed to get a GA double pass for Friday Night Jams, but I really wanted VIP. Surely being Santa deserved that. So on the night, I said to my mate that I took, you want VIP? And of course he's like, yeah. But he asked how I could suss it. I didn't know how I was gonna suss it, but I saw an opportunity to use my mouth my mouth that talks quite a lot of shit uh, to, to weasel my way into the VIP. So I said to him to follow me out to the box office. So he followed me, went up to the lady in the box office, and then politely said to her, Hello, I'm here for the VIP tickets. <laughs> Which was met with, Sorry? So I put on my sweet, I'm confused voice and said, The, the double pass for the dance contest. The what? <laughs> Oh, Jace. Um, Jace said uh, uh, that we won the dance off. She's like, "What the hell's going on?" So I'm like, J "Jason, Jason Derulo. Um, we just did a dance off. We're on the big screen against another duo in the crowd. Uh, the crowd cheered for us uh, the most, and Jace pointed at us and told us to come here and get our double pass." <laughs> She's like, "What the heck's going on?" So she radioed someone, and then she like walks away, comes back. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm like, ah, I missed out. She's like, these artists always do this crap. Now, they didn't tell us about this, but here you go, here's your VIP double pass. <laughs> and that, my friends, is finding an opportunity to get more than you deserve. <laughs> it's a dog eat dog world. So if you can talk your way into something, do it. Take every opportunity you get, just as long as it's for the better. Never take the opportunity to do drugs. That's the truth. Anyway, lads, enjoy your night tonight. Those of you heading into town, be safe. And now we are, I reckon, 50%, maybe a bit more of us, headed out to town. We're to the same club and far, a lot of time. Enjoy it with one another, take care of each other, Keep in touch with your mates after tonight. Come visit your teachers, because trust me, they love that shit. They love when you come in and say hi. <laughs> Especially Miss Suze. <laughs> uh, but most of all, take the opportunities when they come. Look for opportunity in the missed opportunities, and remember, whatever happens next in your life, it is all in your hands. But before I go, I hope it's the next slide. If anyone plays FIFA Ultimate Team, Look at the... I packed him last weekend. <laughs> Which is pretty sick. <laughs> cheers, cheers boys, opportunity to talk and I hope I was not a second rate speaker.